that I am very proud of Doug about is that he is a full waterman. He he's a swimmer. And if there's anybody out there that could answer to the sound of the, the drum that beats when it just gets big out at the mush, it's gonna be Doug. People don't see that side. A lot of people know him as Doug the Enforcer, Doug the Madman. He's just the best, and uh, I don't get worried about him too much. He's a super, super man in my book. But. stay true to the original conceptual idea behind the, the cataboard, speedboard, dug board, whatever you want to call it, which is to achieve enough speed and control to ride, but not only to ride, but to rip monster mush. I came up So I developed the idea, I came up with it back in the early 90s when Dennis O'Connor was in that big sailing race over there on the other side of the world. And um, he, uh, he used a catamaran, which had never been used before in the race. And there was a little controversy behind it, but there was nowhere in the rules that said he couldn't do it. And, um, he just blew the competition away. It wasn't even close. So that to me really demonstrated how fast the dual hull is. And it's never been done surfing waves, which to me, you know, for how long surfing's been around and how long the catamaran's been along, around, it's, it's just about time somebody tried it. And, um, This is our first, this is our first model. And um, it's a little rough on the edges, but I think uh, when we get out there and start trying to ride waves on it, people are gonna see what a difference having the, the dual hull, even in a surfboard version, does. And um, I anticipate people will be blown away by the way we surf Monster Mush on this dug board. Uh, okay. Should I drop the chips? Oh, amazing. Where did you come up with the idea, buddy? Oh, well, something I have, I've yet to get a full grasp on. Um, the importance of our relationship and where we're going with it, but I'd like to say that working with Doug has been a great honor. There isn't a day that goes by that I, that I don't yearn to be by his side and his his master prowess of the ocean. We've been surfing the mush together now for years together. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people that surf the mush or claim to surf the mush, AKA monsters, Stone Zone. 
But I would, I would have to say that Douglas is the master. He's the, he's the greatest man that's walked the face of the earth. He's the greatest man that's paddled through the oceans. He's sailed, he's dove, he's, he's surfed. He's incredible. He makes your typical surfer look just like some Joe somebody nobody. Some nobody, sorry. And um, I mean, just taking a look at this board today and hearing his vision of where he's gonna go with it and how he's gonna how he's gonna conquer the realm of monsters. It just makes me feel really touched. It has annoyed me over the years, you know, being on the North Shore and watching and being a part of the surfing scene for all these years is that the actual emphasis of a waterman is gone down the drain and now it's the guys that do the aerials and the tricks and the fancy stuff with leashes on their board that keep their board close to them so they never have to swim. Some of them when they get lose their board they, they, they drown almost, you have to rescue them. It, the, the waterman element is not there anymore. And I think the thing that, uh, that I am very proud of Doug about is that he is a full waterman. He, he's a swimmer, he's played water polo, he's, uh, he's out in the ocean, being a part of the ocean, he's a waterman, pure waterman, and we don't see that anymore. You've got all these consistent breaks like Pipeline and Jeffrey's Bay and Rincon where every wave is the same and you ride every wave, they're all the same. Uh, if you can't perform on a wave like that, you should quit surfing. But at Monster Mush, that is a totally different element. The wave breaks over here, it breaks over there, it, it's all over the place. And anybody that can surf Waterman, uh, surf Monster Mush is a true Waterman. These days out at the Mush, uh, trying to be inspired and inspire and push the limits. And you know, guys like Steve Albert, Big Doug Stephen Doug Ackerman, guys like Randy Myers. And, and, uh, you know, they're just, there is no, there's no comparison, you know. Doug's knowledge of the ocean and his understanding, the way he prepares himself mentally and physically and especially spiritually, he meditates every day to the mush. There's a day that goes by that he doesn't feel the mush just just coursing through his veins, you know. And if there's anybody out there that could answer to the sound of the, the drum that beats when it just gets big out at the mush, it's gonna be Doug. You know? And it really, it really inspires me and makes me wish I was Doug. God, I wish I was Doug. And but I'm gonna be there, and I'm training hard too, and you know, Peter's training hard, and we got Doug's back, and when he lets that cattle out of the ranch, lets the range free and gets on that Doug board, it's, it's, it's gonna be the day of all days. I hope you guys can be there. It's gonna be something. It's gonna be something. The first day, huh? Let's see, I think that was 63, I think it was. Yep, Larry, Larry Livingston and I were going up to Sunset and we were on the beach and Sunset was big, it was a big west and it was really coming over but it was crowded and Larry and he was looking out away from the surf, as he often did, and he looked down towards this place called Monster Mush, and he said, I think that can be written. I had, so we drove down, and we, we paddled out, and we had, we had very old boards then, they were the, the balsa redwood variety, but I followed Larry, he was, uh, he was a pioneer, and, uh, there's a picture of Larry over here on the wall. Uh, Bud Brown was there that day, and Larry took off, and that was the wave. That was the first wave that was ever ridden at Monster Mush. And that was the smallest wave of the day. And I want to tell you, 
I, I paddled in that day. I, I hate to say it, but I saw that wave and I knew I couldn't, I couldn't match what Larry did. I, I went in. Wipeout at Mons Mush I had recently. Uh, I was uh, trying to avoid Tyler, who was uh, coming down this wave, and it dove to the right a little bit and down, and, and just suddenly I, I plastered the reef with my nose. And uh, at that point, I realized, you know, I must have made a mistake. I must have misgaged the depth of the water because I hadn't even uh, taken a stroke when my face hit the bottom. Uh, I then uh, recovered quite quickly. Uh, came to the surface and I, I think I scared Tyler a little bit with all this blood all over my face and uh, with the water turning brown around us. But, uh, you know, I don't really recall a lot about it. It was such a traumatizing experience. I don't know if I'll ever go back out at Monster Mush again, but I think, you know, I think maybe I'll, I'll be able to get up my guts and go back out again. Uh, yeah, you know, maybe it was a little smaller than it is today. You know, something like that. Physical training, eating right, rest, you develop the mental security and confidence that you've done everything in your power to prepare yourself for the unknown, for the unpredictable harder. Because you don't know what's going to come your way when you're out there. Harder. No, 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 Peter. All one motion, all with your legs. Here, throw it to me. And to Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, honey. Hey, guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, great. It looks like you've been working really hard out uh, here. As usual. So I went into the kitchen and used some of that coconut milk from the trees we passed the other day. And I uh, mixed it with some cooking nut oil, spirulina, peanut butter. Oh, and of course, wow. your favorite the tree bark from the tree down the street. Oh, cool. And, I was hoping to uh, give it a try. My Tart, but it should work. Ah, it's great. Yeah, you like that? It's excellent. Hey, um, it's you know what would be great with it? Maybe uh, <laughs> some tuna fish sandwiches? Tuna fish. Oh, you caught, you speared that huge that's tuna right. yeah, off that's the point the other day. Yeah, well, it's not, Fantastic. I guess I could go and skin it and gut it it's and amazing. everything. It might, might take a little while, but. Uh, yeah. Well, we got a bit more training to do. Okay. But um, maybe like uh, 15 minutes, you can have that ready? Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks a lot. You're a lucky guy, man. That's insane. Good eat, good broth. It's really hot. These boys are uh, they're crazy. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I sit up at night, all night long sometimes, when I'm, they tell me the buoys are 25, 20, and I just know that I'm not sleeping that night. But over the years, I have I've gotten used to the idea that they're going to do it no matter what. And uh, they love it. And Doug, of course, is just, he's amazing. He's a superhero. I get worried, but I have this little shell. And he found it for me when he was training off of Kaina Point swimming with the tiger sharks. And I just rub it. And then I think good thoughts, and I know that he's going to be safe, and he's close to my heart, and nothing's going to happen to him, and he's the best. This whole monster mush thing was really got me worried at first, but uh, I've been watching the spot, and I think that with all the training they've been doing, they're going to be able to conquer it for sure. And they've got the equipment, and the team seems pretty strong. Some of these guys are not all there. But Doug's gonna get them in shape, my little smoothies, and I do my part. 
And uh, it'll be okay, I think. It'll be okay. And then, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I've known Dougie for a long time. We were neighbors. But uh, it wasn't until this fateful day, back in the winter of 1987, my gosh, can't believe it's been that long, when uh, we were playing. And there was a heavy storm moving through town. And all the kids were out in the neighborhood, all playing around in our raincoats, having a blast. And something happened. I uh, was out of bounds. I went somewhere where my mom told me not to. And the other kids weren't playing. It was down the road. There was a, a freak flash flood that came through the neighborhood. And if anyone knows Kinui Road, we have a, a lot of little wells around the neighborhood, septic tanks. And uh, I uh, got sucked down the road and I was heading towards one of the wells. And Dougie, out of nowhere, showed up and said, Kara, no, you're going too, too fast. And I was just oblivious. I was just streaming down thinking I was in like a fun little current. And he uh, miraculously saved me, grabbed my hand right before I got to the Sunset Bridge where I would have been swept out to sea and never found, that's for sure. There was my knight in shining armor in his yellow raincoat, blonde hair and blue eyes, and it was that day when I knew that I was going to be a part of his life forever, and I would do anything for him. He saved me, and uh, I owe my life to him. So that's why I'm here, supporting him, and doing whatever I can. nicely, so I'm just going to say it straight up. You're not cutting it. What are you saying? You're out. But Doug, I've been doing the training. I did the coconut look, dodging. Look, there's nothing what more to talk about, Peter. The decision's been made. But Doug, I'll train harder, man. Just look, give me listen to one you. more chance. You're pathetic. One chance. We don't have time for this. Doug! Come on, Doug. It's over. doing that kind of thing. Peter's a nice guy, but nice isn't what it takes. 
we're a team out there, and a team is only as strong as its weakest link. When I'm on that cattle board, I need to have complete faith in the two guys pulling me into that wave. And unfortunately, Peter just wasn't where he needed to be. I've been, I've been disappointed with his progress for a while now. And just yesterday, I ran into Tyler. Duh, what are you doing with my boards? Oh, Tyler. Well, um, I would, you wanna be part of our team? So, uh, Tyler's taking his place. Yeah, yeah, I'm bummed. Of course I'm bummed. I mean, I put a lot into that. And, but it doesn't, I mean, I, it doesn't stop me from respecting and loving Douglas like I always did. And I know how hard it was for him to make that decision. But I'm not gonna stop training. I'm still working out. I'm ready to go at any moment. He just has to let me know he needs me. And I'm out there. I'm with him. Faster, Tyler. Nice. You know, at first I was angry at Doug for him using my boards without my permission. When I found out what his vision is, out of all those boards under his house, he chose mine. Tyler, enough yeah. yeah. talk. We got a train. Okay. Climb the tree. Training. Inner tube training is something I developed as a, a means to fully surrender myself to the ocean and all its power. It's a way to prepare for the heavy situations that you're going to encounter out there at Monster Mush. And um, the idea is when I'm on the inner tube, I can't control my movements because it's a very awkward floating device and it's really buoyant so I'm stuck on the surface and the waves are just gonna pound me and I just hang on for dear life which um, in a lot of ways is similar to a real life wipeout situation out of monsters you don't know what the wave's gonna do you don't know where it's gonna throw you which way you're gonna go so I have really found that after training with the inner tube I'm much more comfortable in heavy wipeout situation out in the water.
test the, the parameters of strength and endurance. It, it might look like I'm frolicking around, but I'm using every muscle, every ounce of energy just to withstand the, the movement of the wave. I think it went well. It's, uh, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling in shape, I'm feeling fit, I'm feeling strong. Yeah. Oh, I think it's just a matter of waiting around for the right day. Yeah. Keep yeah. up the training, you know. Yeah. I gotta keep up my uh, my running, my swimming, yeah. my uh, my rock running, yeah. my coconut dodging, yeah. um, and obviously the inner tube training that I forget. Okay guys, let's go over this one more time so we're all on the same page, all right? Joe, you're my left hand man. Tyler, you're my right wing, okay? Now like I said, I gotta be relatively even with you guys so we catch the wave at the same moment or you guys are a split second into me. Tyler, you're gonna veer right, Joe, veer left. Okay? That's gonna create like a slingshot effect and it should propel me with an abnormal amount of speed right down the face of the wave. And um, I'll let go as soon as I feel that push. All right? And then yeah. you guys should be able to ride to safety in the channels on either side. Safety's not our concern, though. We're just I know, but I don't want anyone to wave. get hurt. I don't want anybody to get hurt. Safety should always be our number one concern. All right, so all right. we do want to pull this off, so, you know. Okay. Guys, let's do it. Aren't you that towing guy? Hey. Can I take your picture? Hey man, I work for Psyched on Surfing Magazine. My name's Schleppy. How you do? Like the boys are having a little power out there. They're kind of regrouping. They got the boards back out there. They're getting the tow rope set up. This looks like a pretty killer set rolling in right now. This is it. Go on this thing. That's ridiculous. I can't believe it. No, no. no way.
my gosh, dude, that was so unbelievable. You must be so proud. Like, your boyfriend's the man. I, I, I grew up knowing him, but you get to go out with him. I can't believe it's finally happening. I know. I, you're the luckiest woman. Like, if I was a girl, I I'd be so jealous. Training, be, I know. He's he's unbelievable. He's you're so always unbelievable. there for him. You're part of it. Yeah. I'm so proud to say that I know Doug Cole. He's been training all his life for that, man. Look where he lives every day. He's training, watching that wave. Uh, he's half myth, half maniac, but all jawaiim. That was unreal. Yeah, it was great. What a rush. Boy, when that Oh man, I wish I wish the board held up all. I'd love to get a couple more, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't think there was any flaw in your design or anything. You no, know, it was just too it, heavy. It was just incredible. Just no, no board would have held that held up in that way. Ah, it was tough. Yeah. Stupendous. I mean, it could have been a little stronger, but. It's oh, pretty sturdy, you know, we used a lot of duct tape on that thing. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. I don't, I don't think there's anything you could have done differently, Doug. I mean, hopefully I got you in the right spot, you know? Yeah, yeah. All that training paid off? Yeah, uh, if we didn't do all that training, we, we might not be on the beach right now. Oh, we could still be out there. Yeah. I think that boat out there is looking, thinking maybe we didn't make that one, but... No worries, huh? Yeah. That really? This is too much for me to comprehend. I've never done anything like that before in my life. No one has, Tyler. No one has. We're the first guys. Yeah. The first I can ever. Stick a flag in the sand. D flag. We'll be back out there, man. It'll take a few days to make another catapult. But... Is there anything different you do that you want to design uh, your next board with? I might try something else besides duct tape, but um, <laughs> just something that maybe has a little more hold to it. Maybe a uh, fiberglass and resin. Yeah. You know, like, like we use on surfboards, but I don't know. Maybe we'll just try the same thing. I, yeah, I honestly think it might have just been too heavy of a wave, you know? Yeah, you know, possibly. We just, I mean, if we didn't wipe out and I made it to the bottom, yeah, we'd have been golden. Yeah. Was just, it was critical situation. Six spot we were on the wave, and you know, like there was only one place to go, that was straight down, but. Uh, nah, yeah. I, I don't think you could have paddled into that wave, though. Nah, you saw what happened to me. Yeah. I, I got hit. Yeah, the only lot, chance was, was to tow in. Yeah, it was definitely a towing experience all and, the way. 100%. And, and you need the, the catabord, too. Like, I mean, just the speed that you get off that. It's the only chance of making something like that. Yep. So it's just... Yeah. Maybe we could have been in a slightly better spot when we took off. But, ah, well, you know, that's when yeah. it's that big, though, you're just... We had to go on that one. It's like, that was like, the, like the, the ocean. We were in an ideal spot, but we had to go. Yep. Yeah. The choose is you, you know? Yeah. You can only just, you know, hope and pray. That's what we did, Doug. And with all that training, the flawless design, you know, you fulfill your dream, your destiny. You know, uh, you know and I'm fortunate it's and just begun, honored. But it's begun. Beginning. There's more to come. Cool. We're gonna we're gonna do better than that next time, but that's a start. Good I'm, job. I'm happy with how it went. Right on. Yeah. Then then the horizon. What do you say we go get a beer? No, we go get a keg. <laughs> well bounced it. Hey guys, that's the end, but thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And Hope you stay tuned so we can give some thanks and appreciation to all the people that helped out. Uh, thanks, Joe, for playing Joe. And thank you, Kara, for playing Kara. And uh, Tyler for doing a great job of just being Tyler.
we're a team out there. And we're a team out there. And I need to have complete, complete faith in those two guys that are pulling. <laughs> That's why you can't. It's only as strong as its weakest link. I need to have complete confidence in those two guys pulling me into that wave. <laughs> I'd like to thank Jim and Sue for their uh, VCR so we could edit. Because we got way outdated VCRs that were no good. And theirs was really nice. And a uh, loud shout out to Darren for being the paparazzi of this film and bringing down his expensive rented camera equipment. What is inner tube training? Inner tube training is something I developed as a means to fully... <laughs> Doug, what's inner tube training? Inner tube training is something I developed. Doug, what's inner tube training? Inner tube training is something I developed for moving to the safe water on the wave. On the inner tube, it goes wherever it wants and wherever the wave wants to take it. So the idea is I grab on like this. <laughs> grab on and bear hug it, and you just hold on for your life <laughs> to fully surrender myself to the ocean. When I'm out there on my inner tube, I can't manipulate the way I'm going to move and, and avoid heavy situations, so the ocean decides what's going to happen to me, which in a lot of ways is a, like, similar to a wipeout out of Monster Mush. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if it's going to take you and slam you down into the rocks. <laughs> Thanks to Lucky Jim and Big Peter for being the old men that they are. Uh, thanks for Sally and Sue for playing themselves. Uh, thanks a lot, Poncho, for spitting out your beer for us. Uh, thank you, uh, everybody, uh, especially Buck for uh, always somehow being in the background of every shot. Ah, here we go. You ever seen these extreme rockers? Watch this. I'm in the, the Raging Rockers. We have an extreme rocker group. Yeah, don't see any kids trying this. It's 48 when Larry Livingston did it. Has anybody tried it? We tried it a couple times, mind you. But I don't think we ever matched Larry. He was surfing it on a pine log. No fin. Still had the pine needles on it. And the cones, too. Here we go. You ever seen them big sugar pine cones? They get dra dragged when you paddled in. Uh, special thanks to Nina Tyler Orion for helping film. Yeah, and also uh, Blake, Dan, Big Peter, Jim, and everybody else for their ideas and inspiration. Yeah, we're not going to use that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the important thing as you get older is to maintain your coordination. <laughs> And to ride Monster Mush, you definitely need coordination. Well, thank you especially to Big Dog, who came through and led us all to that 
pinnacle wave that you all witnessed. Thank you. Say mahalo nui loa, kikua. Yeah, thanks to Joe also for not throwing the coconuts too hard at me. You know what, honestly, I couldn't care less. I think uh, Douglas actually did me a favor kicking me off of that team. The whole thing, the whole thing's a joke, really, you know? I think, I think I'm think i probably the only sane person around here that, that knows what a joke it is. There's two boards duct taped together with a piece of plywood. I mean, the thing, first way to get out there, it's just gonna tear that thing apart. And then Tyler and, and Joe, they're gonna be annihilated because they're paddling in front on these, these huge boards with nowhere to go. And Doug's, I don't know. It's all about Doug, isn't it? Really, when it comes down to it, it's just his big ego trip. And a really big thanks and appreciation goes out to Peter for doing just about everything on the film from uh, filming, editing, writing, acting. And oh, come on, Doug. I mean, we all did it, you know? Just sorry you got kicked off. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, but yeah. you were a really good sport about getting kicked off the oh, team. Oh, man. What a rush. Boy, when that wave started heading for us, I thought our eggs was gonna put an arm against the sky. <laughs> uh, yeah. I looked out, the wave headed for me it was so big, I knew my omelet <laughs> I knew my omelet was headed for the frying pan. My bag was unreal. What?